This is a MATLAB simulation of a single phase inverter with API controller implemented in both the voltage and current loops. The challenge with employing API controller in inverter control lies in the fact that, when tracking sinusoidal signals, there inevitably exists some steady state error. In this case, you can observe that my reference voltage is set at 230 volts, but the actual voltage being output is 236 volts. This problem can be solved by replacing the PI controller with APR controller. This is the inverter simulation with APR controller. Here, it is evident that both the reference and actual voltages are identical, resulting in nearly zero steady state error. However, compared to API controller, the implementation of APR controller poses a more challenging task. In this presentation, I will explain a simple control method that can be employed in a single phase inverter using API controller. This approach ensures accurate tracking of the AC reference signals without any steady state error. So let's get started. This is the block diagram of the controller which I am going to explain to you now. First, we compare the RMS value of the reference voltage with that of the actual output voltage to generate an error. This error is then input into API controller. As both the reference and actual values are DC quantities, the PI controller can achieve effective tracking without steady state error. The output of the PI controller is subsequently multiplied by a sinusoidal signal with unit amplitude. This resulting output is then directed to the PWM generation block, completing the control process. Now I will open the math lab and start doing the simulation. Add a DC voltage source. Set the voltage 400. Add an IGBT. Form the edge bridge using IGBT and connect to the DC voltage source. Add a from block. Name it as PWM1. Name it as PWM2. Name it as PWM3. Name it as PWM4. Add a series RLC branch. Specify the branch type as RL, with a resistance value of 0.0002 ohms and an inductance of 4 milli hendies. Copy the RLC branch. Specify the branch type as RC, with a resistance value of 0.0002 ohms and a capacitance of 6 microfarads. Copy the RLC branch. Specify the branch type as R, with a resistance value of 26 ohms. Add a voltage measurement block. Connect across the load resistance. Add a go-to block. Name it as V-load. Add a constant block. Define the peak value of the required output voltage as 300 volts. Add a sum block. Change its sign to plus minus. Drag and drop the output voltage signal. Add a RMS block.
set the frequency to 50 Hz and the initial RMS voltage to 230 volts. Add API D controller. Configure the controller type as PI with AKP value of 0.03 and KI value of 20. Add a product block. Add a sine wave. Set the frequency 2 pi into 50. Add a gain block. Set the value as 1 divided by 400. Add a repeating sequence. Set the values for minus 1 to 1, 10 kHz triangular waveform. Add a relational operator. Set the operator to greater than or equal to. Copy the block. Add a gain block. Set the value minus 1. Add a logical operator. Set the operation not. Copy the block. Now connect all the PWM signals to the gate terminal of the IGBT. Add a scope. Connect the output voltage to the scope. Add a power guide block. Make the simulation type discrete and sampling time 1E rise to minus 7. Open the model settings. Set solver type or DE23T. Set simulation time to 0.4 seconds and run the simulation. This represents the output voltage, and the voltage amplitude precisely matches the reference value without any steady state error. Now we change the reference to 200 volt and run the simulation. Thank you. 
Now also the voltage amplitude exactly matches with the reference value. So, the conclusion here is that, even when using API controller, we can precisely control the output voltage of an inverter without any steady state error. This marks the end of the presentation. Thank you for watching.